Greetings. Welcome to Dingleberry Farm Homestead. As you can see behind me, I've got a solar shed. We built this last year, uh, springtime, in order to uh, dry wood that we mill on our sawmill. We have a Woodmiser LT15 start. And in order to be able to use projects inside the house, such as a pantry or shelf units, etc., uh, we needed to have some way of uh, drying the wood down to an acceptable moisture content. I think most people say that uh, in inside projects require moisture content of 10% or less, and some say 8%. Um, green wood can be used for outdoor projects, of which we've done several, including the solar shed or the solar kiln. Um, but uh, I needed to be able to dry wood for projects around the homestead and also ultimately one day to uh, dry wood that we would sell, such as uh, oak slabs. Um, we got the sawmill in 2001 early and built several projects with it. Uh, got a, a little shed for my tractor and um, my first sawmill, which is my other video, which I never completed. I ended up uh, using it for a little while and then uh, decided to build a, a better one in a different location. But uh, I knew as the summer was coming on that I wanted to go ahead and start drying wood. And I got on the internet and watched YouTube videos and looked it up on uh, uh, various websites. And it seems like the Virginia Tech plans is I think how they're mostly referred to as one of the most common. Um, and I decided to uh, build a mill using those plans or at least roughly based on those plans. Uh, I say roughly because I had materials here that I wanted to use. I didn't want to have to spend too much money. This was uh, uh, right in the middle of COVID and uh, lumber prices and material prices are basically through the roof. So uh, I wanted to uh, let you see what I did with my project. Uh, I'll explain how I got to where I am and I'll let you know how it's worked for me. Uh, I'll say right off front, I'm pretty pleased with it. So without further ado, let's uh, get into it. In this picture, note that there is a short front wall approximately 32 inches in height. The back wall is approximately 100 inches. I say approximately because the angle of the roof should match the latitude of your location. Because the sun changes position throughout the year, high in the summer, low in the winter, any number you use is only ideal for a few months at best. Because it's easier to build using standard construction angles, I chose a 45 degree roof for my kiln. Because my kiln sits behind my garage facing due south, I couldn't easily put doors on the back, so I chose to put my door on the side. Most solar kilns have you load the wood with a gap in the front to allow for airflow. Some sort of baffle is then used along with fans across the top. The baffle is usually dark in color to absorb as much solar radiation as possible. The fans then drive the air downward, through the gap in front, and then through the wood stack. This warm air is naturally lower in relative humidity and pulls moisture from the wood. The moisture-laden air then rises up to the fans to make another loop. Outside vents are to vent out excess moisture during certain times in the drying process. The base for my kiln is made from beams cut on the sawmill and then treated with yakasugi, also known as shosugiban for rut resistance. I have another video here on YouTube showing the effectiveness of this process over a year and a half of real use. Basically, yakasugi involves charring the wood, which burns off most of the surface cellulose, leaving the hard lignin behind. It supposedly closes the pores of the wood, which limits the absorption of water. Once charred, the wood is then coated with a mixture of used motor oil and diluted with diesel fuel. The floor and rim joists were then laid down. Before covering the floor, I installed solid foam insulation sheets between the joists. I set them down about an inch to form an air gap, hoping to increase the R value a bit. By this time, the pandemic was in full swing and lumber prices were through the roof. While most of the mill was sawn on site, I did have to use some store-bought materials. I had six sheets of chipboard left over from another project, so I doubled up for strength. I plan on replacing this at some point, but it's held up remarkably well, probably because the weight of the wood is spread out and stickered. Speaking again of using available materials, I got about 50 glass panes from a free site on Facebook. The plastic roofing that most plans call for would have added about $200 to my cost. I elected to build the roof with these panes, which required a fair amount of work to cut out rabbits and caulk all the joints. With 20 panes of glass and 80 rabbits, you might guess there were a few leaks, and there were. 
At the end of the day, I gave up trying to fix them and just laid out UV-rated plastic on top. This has worked out pretty well. Once the shell was complete, I tacked up felt paper and then sided the kiln. The front, back, and top were done with some metal corrugated sheets I got from a friend. The sides were done with milled siding. The inside was insulated and then boards installed and painted black. I picked up two 12-volt automobile fans online and installed in a plywood baffle across the top. I also picked up a solar panel and installed it on top of the kiln to power the fans. No switches are necessary. When the sun is out, the kiln is heating up, the fans come on. When the sun goes down, the fans stop. Here's a screenshot from the software we use to monitor the mill's humidity and temperature. When first built, <clears throat> without a load, the kiln would get up to about 135 degrees. This was towards the beginning of summertime. Uh, the first load of pine uh, took probably three weeks, uh, four weeks to dry. When we first put it in the kiln, the kiln's temperature dropped down to about 120 or so because as water evap evaporates, it cools. Um, and as it dries, the temperature would rise each day until uh, it got down to the point where we pulled it out. And again, it got back up to about 135. Uh, the second load of wood that we put in uh, was probably the first part of summer, uh, maybe getting into the middle part of summer. And again, three or four weeks later, it had that dried to the point where the mill was hitting top temperatures. The highest we ever recorded was the first week of August, uh, which was 150 degrees. Um, when we put the, the oak and the pine uh, in there to replace that load, Again, it dropped back down to about 120 degrees. Um, and we knew that because of winter time, it would take longer, especially because of the oak. Uh, so we were hoping that uh, maybe by the middle of this summer, the oak would be completed. Uh, we were pleasantly surprised when we tested the uh, humidity on the um, oak. The moisture content was around 7%. This was the uh, first week of April of this year. So it exceeded my expectations. Um, we're uh, looking for a place to put the oak so that we can put another load in there to see what it's going to do in its first full summer of heat. My total cost for the kiln is going to be approximately $350 to $400. Most of that was the silver panel up on top, which was about 100 The uh, 12 volt fans were about 40 I think, uh, for, the, the, for the pair. Um, screws and nails were ridiculously expensive. Again, this is COVID and uh, they're already expensive, but they were even more so. Um, the UV rated plastic sheet was about 40 bucks, of which I only used half of it. So if something happens to this, if it gets torn or ultimately does degrade, I have a, another half that I can put on there. And then there was the six sheets of uh, chipboard that I used for the flooring, which I already had, and I had bought, bought pre-COVID for about seven or eight bucks a piece. So whatever that all comes up to. So I'm gonna call it 350, 400 bucks. As far as operation goes, I'm pleased. Um, you know, there was a certain amount of work involved in milling the wood and, and putting the frame together and you know, working in a what ultimately became a hot room, um, painting, and, trials and tribulations of putting up the glass panes and trying to get the water to not leak, etc. But uh, again, at the end of the day, for the price I've got into it, for what it's done for me, I'm pleased. The one thing that I'm not terribly pleased about is the side door loading. So here's a little tour of my kiln. Pardon the jumpy camera, I don't have an expensive gimbal that eliminates motion. Uh, Right there is my uh, oak slabs. Uh, this is a uh, already dry um, uh, uh, pine one inch boards that I'm gonna be using for uh, a porch. Um, the uh, boards on the inside of the kiln, as you can see, are painted black and dry, they butted up against each other. This was a uh, green lumber. Um, it did not bother me that, it, that, it, that the gaps would open up because again, it's insulated, so it really doesn't make a difference. Um, this uh, tarp is uh, black on one side, the side facing outwards. So it's what's uh, collecting the uh, solar energy. And then the fans, which you can probably hear, 
are in the, uh, the baffle at the top connected to the solar panel and they basically drive the air uh, down the front uh, in front of the oak slab and then the air comes through the oak slab through the pine and then back up and then just completes the cycle over and over again and here's what I have queued up for this year most of it is oak the pile on the other side is pine which is going to be used mostly for construction projects uh, the oak the ends have been uh, uh, painted I used latex paint again go with the materials that are on hand I know that I could uh, buy products specifically for that at a higher cost but to be honest the uh, oak log that's in the kiln right now uh, was uh, coated with uh, latex paint on the end and it had no checking at the end of the six months drying time um, I just need a place to uh, store the wood and I will be fine. Um, I'm going to um, set up a couple places on the property and I will uh, slab this oak for the most part and air dry it uh, for as much as a year and then finish it in the kiln. Thanks for watching the video. I'm still pretty new to YouTube, so it would help me a bunch if you'd like and subscribe. Thanks.